Welcome, dear friends and believers. This is Senior Pastor Michael Whitlock with the Nazarene Ministry coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. And I want to pray very quickly. Dear Holy and Sacred Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, Shekinah El, fill this studio with your presence. Fill me with you, Holy Spirit. Give me Holy Spirit utterance, which means language. Holy Spirit unction, push me in the right direction. Give me rhema word. The rhema word is the will of the Father. I am just a man and I have fallen short of your holy glory. Yet you use me to speak your will. Wash me in the blood of Yeshua Messiah, the Mashiach Eleheinu, from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet, inside out, outside and in. Cause me to be set apart from all evil, protect me from all evil, and all the people listening to this video, protect them. Amen. Let's turn to Revelation 21, please. Now, this is a very interesting chapter and very educational all at the same time. And it covers something that I know the Holy Spirit has clearly said to me. I want you to go over this in your broadcast with the people that watch your videos. I went, okay, obedient. Remember, 1 Samuel says, obedience is greater than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. In other words, be obedient to God, take his advice, and do it. So, and I'm adjusting everything. I'm today alone in the studio. My IT guy's not here. So we're technically adjusting a few things. But let's go. Chapter 21. And I saw a renewed. Now, from the translation of the Hebrew to English, it's, and I'm reading from the Hebrew, it always says renewed. So, for example, going back to the Holy Communion where it says, a renewed and holy covenant. We'll go over that in detail. Let's not segue away from this too far. And I saw a renewed heaven and a renewed earth for the former heaven and the former earth had passed away and the sea is no more. Now, so this goes back to what did our Messiah say? In chapter 5 of Matthew, and I'm going from memory, so work with me here. I didn't come to destroy the law or the prophecies I came to fulfill. And then in 18, 19, 21, he goes on to say that not one dot or tittle of the law will pass away. And then he says, none of it will pass away until all has been done or all has passed away. What is it talking about? Book of Revelation. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I'm in the desert. My throat is dry. Summer is coming. Pray to God we have some rain. All right, so we read on. And I, Yohanan in the Hebrew, which would be John and King James, saw the set-apart city renewed Jerusalem. That's because God's throne comes and resides over the earth like it did during the time of Adam and Eve. And I, Yohanan, saw the set-apart city renewed, Jerusalem coming down out of the heaven from Elohim, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. God is coming to dwell uh, above us, but with us. And I heard a loud voice from the heavens saying, See, the booth of Elohim is with men. Now, booth, tabernacle, would be another way to translate that. See, the booth of Elohim, that means God Almighty, is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Elohim himself shall be with them, and be their Elohim. What this is telling us is right back to the Garden of Eden where God came every evening at the close of the day to walk in the 
cool of the evening with Adam. And then once Eve was uh, created, Adam and Eve. And Elohim, meaning God Almighty, shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, no, nor mourning, nor crying, and there shall be no more pain, for the former matters have passed away. Now, this is what our Messiah was talking about in Matthew 5, starting with verse 17, going through to 22. And he who was sitting on the throne said, See, I make all matters new. And he said to me, Write for these words are true and trustworthy. And he said to me, It is done. I am a leaf and tov, that's Hebrew for Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. The beginning and the end. To the one who thirsts, I shall give of the fountain of the water of life without payment. The one who overcomes shall inherit all this, and I shall be his Elohim, and he shall be my son. So all of us who overcome sin and temptation, we inherit all of these promise. But as for the cowardly, now this, we're going to stop a minute and talk about it. It hurts me to have to say this, and I say it in tough love. That was a term my mother used to use when sometimes she had to ground us or something and thank God she did because we learned and changed there are so many ministries out there that are led by people who are being cowards and they're going to be judged it's right here in 21 chapter 21 verse 7 they're going to be judged what did God say to Joshua in Joshua 1? Have courage. In other words, don't be a coward. I am with you every step of the way. Have courage. Haven't I told you? Have courage. God does not like cowards. And there are ministries being led by cowards. And why do I say that? Because they can't pray and teach the scriptures well enough that they are prospered abundantly from God Almighty. They cannot teach their flock well enough that you must tithe and offer to God. Malachi 3 says, you curse God when you steal his tithe and offering. And they can't teach that to their flock. I've got all these ministries calling me from Pakistan, Africa, begging for money and I say to them stop being beggars and cowards and develop the courage to stand on your two feet and teach your flock to tithe and offer into your ministry and you won't need to call me or anyone else to help you now I want you to think about that and I know that's tough, hard thing to say, but it's true. This ministry does not call other ministries and ask them to give us money. Have we had hard times? Oh, yeah. In Vegas, we have lost two flocks, one to COVID-19 and the one before that, a flash flood came down from the mountains and wiped out my 4,000 square foot worship area in knee deep mud and water, I lost a quarter of a million dollar investment in that 101 South Front Street, uh, Pahrump, Nevada, our second church. And the only thing I can pray about that is 
I don't know what I did wrong, God, but please forgive me and correct me and direct me. And God did. He told me, I brought you out to Vegas. That's where I want you. Now you pack up your stuff and you get to Vegas and get out of Pahrump. And he was right. And I did. And then the blessings and the open doors of blessings began to come one by one by one by one. You got to be where God wants you, doing what God wants you to do, and then you're blessed. And you cannot be a coward in your prayers. You got to pray tough. You got to pray that the holy angels, warring angels, because we're in a battle against all evil, are battling in your behalf. And we have the right in the name and blood of Yeshua Messiah to call upon them to help us, save us, and protect us, and bring abundance to us so we can keep going forward. Then COVID-19 hit, and it hurt every church in the state of Nevada because our governor followed to the T every command of the federal government that said no one's allowed to gather together publicly anywhere. So they closed all churches. They even closed down, can you imagine this? As greedy as Nevada is, they closed down the casinos, the restaurants, everything was closed down. Now, I don't know about every other state, but that's what happened here. Now I'm here, so I had to get licensed as a security guard to be able to just live, breathe, and have a place, uh, a roof over my head and eat. Because the Bible says, if you don't work, you don't deserve to eat. So I got a job as a security guard and I went out and I worked and I deserved to eat, have shelter, communication, transportation, etc. And I tithed and offered off uh, uh, on all of that money I made as a security guard. And whenever income comes into this ministry, I can prove to the IRS or anyone else, we always tithe and offer. And it's just that simple. Now, these cowardly ministers who are afraid to face their flocks and tell them you're stealing from God, no wonder they have to call everybody else and try to get someone, beg someone to give them money. Now let's read on. The one who overcomes shall inherit all this and I shall be his Elohim and he shall be my son. But as for the cowardly and untrustworthy and abominable and murderers and those who whore and drug sorcerers and idolaters and all the false, their part is in the lake which burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. Now we're gonna stop right there. I have had to argue with these milk toast, limp wrist, spineless, brainless, ignorant pastors who say they have PhDs about this very issue. You're saved by grace and we're not going to be judged. No, in Revelation, this is God telling Christ to tell John, write this down. Here's what's going to happen. Matthew 5, 17, Christ himself said, I didn't come to change the laws or the prophecies. I came to fulfill. And it's just that simple. But your cowardly pastors won't teach it. And so you are being held back from the truth. And when you know the truth and you live the truth, now your blessing comes. So Matthew 5, verse 17. Do not think that I came to destroy the Torah, that means the laws, or the prophets, or prophecy in the King James. I did not come to destroy, but to complete. King James says, fulfill, meaning the same thing. For truly I say to you, till the heavens and the earth pass away, there it is again, one jot or one tittle. 
shall by no means pass from the Torah, your translation would say law, till all be done. Whoever then breaks one of the least of these commands and teaches men so shall be called least in the reign of heavens. And that's if they make it there. But whoever does and teaches them, that's me, he shall be called great in the reign of the heavens. Now, you might think to yourself, wow, that's kind of egotistical, Pastor. No, I want to be a king under the rule of the king of kings. I don't want to be a sheep, a baby Christian in diapers who doesn't know how to be independent, pray properly, take care of myself properly, and know the scriptures properly? No. I want to be a king in the kingdom. He is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the good shepherd. So make a choice. If you're a lady, you could be a queen in the kingdom of our Messiah. And he is the king of kings, so he would be your king. It's all up to you. Make a choice. If you want to be a sheep that is led by the good shepherd, that's your choice as well. I don't choose that. All right, so it reads, For I say to you that unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall by no means enter into the reign of the heavens. Some translations will say enter into the gates of heaven. You heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder and whoever murders shall be liable to the judgment. So all of these ministers, and I've argued with them on radio, TV, who are telling you, yes, you're saved by grace, but you're still under the law. Grace does not give me, you, or anyone else the excuse to sin. And Christ even says that if we even think sin, we've committed it. So, my friends, tough love. I love you all. Learn from the scriptures. I'm here to tell you and teach you the truth. Join our ministry and you will get the facts, not some packaged up message that imitates all of these neuro-linguistic preachers who are trying to tell you you are loved and it doesn't matter who you are what you are or what you do there is judgment paul makes it very clear our guess who's going to judge you these ministries always say oh jesus loves you to give you the impression that you're not going to be judged well excuse me it is in the scriptures paul talks about it over and over again all judgment has been put into the hands of our Messiah, the person you call Jesus Christ. He sits at the right hand of the Father on the throne of God, and he's the one that will judge you for being a lawless person. Now, even in Matthew, it says, we've healed in your name, we've raised the dead in your name, we've done all these things in your name, and he says very clearly, I knew you not, you workers of lawlessness. In other words, you didn't live by the law. How many laws are there? 613. Most Christians can't even say the Ten Commandments. It's a shame. It's embarrassing. Most pe people that I've met, they haven't memorized the prayer that our sacred Savior gave us which some people call the Lord's Prayer, some people call our, the Our Father. The point is they can't even say it. It's absolutely ridiculous. So my point is this, not everyone who says to me, Master, Master, I'm reading right from scripture, shall enter into the reign of the heavens, or your translation would say gates of heaven, but he who is doing the desire or will 
of my Father in the heavens. Many shall say to me in that day, Master, Master, we have, have we not, excuse me, I read it wrong, my fault. Have we not prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And then I, this is the Messiah himself saying, and then I shall declare to them, I never knew you, depart from me, you who work lawlessness. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and does them shall be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rock of what? The rock of our salvation. People, I hope this has helped you. It's my job to teach you and train you and be bold and courageous, courageous, excuse me, in the blood name of our Messiah, Yahushua Messiah, the Mashiach, Eloheinu, Jesus Christ, the Nazarene. You need answers, questions about scripture. I welcome your call. Leave your name and number at the side of the tone, but leave the time zone you're calling from. Remember, I get calls from Pakistan, Kenya, all kinds of places, Europe, London, uh, Australia, all kinds of places. Now, only one place I don't really get m many calls from is South America. Today, I talked uh, Skype video chat with a gentleman uh, who's in a uh, university in Kenya and asked me to pray with him so that he passed his test. And of course we did. He tested in August for his final exams. And I prayed for him to have victory in his final exams. I get calls like that from all over the planet. Scotland, England, London, Ireland, all places. Like I said, the only place I don't get many calls from is South America. I love you all. I truly do. And I'm praying for you all. Until we meet again, be safe, be protected. Watch out for the evil is everywhere. Pray constantly. Don't give up. Pray in the morning, pray in the afternoon, pray in the evening. Pray constantly. Your prayers will be answered. And don't give up because over time, You'll learn about praying more powerfully, more powerfully, and your prayers will get answered. I guarantee it. This is Senior Pastor Michael Whitlock with the Nazarene Ministry out here in Las Vegas, Nevada. You need to call us, call 702-588-9237. And of course, we're in the United States of America, so if you're calling from a, for, uh, a foreign country, uh, remember it's one, then 702-588-9237. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Be safe. Love our Lord and Savior and love the laws that God gave us. Amen.